everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 7 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series, where today I am working my way towards making some cool stuff. Uh, last episode, I planned to do the whole lava from the nether thing, and then it took me a lot longer to find another fortress than I thought. However, I did get one, which is exciting, and I set up a waystone so that we can get to and from said location. Uh, so now all I need to do is make myself a little bit of wool, and we should be cool. Let's see, I should have enough blaze rods now to make two ender tanks, as long as I get a little obsidian. Nice. So that's what we're going to set up today. We're going to get the power flowing over here. We're going to make sure that our, our magma furnace is doing its job. Uh, that'll get us more RF. I might dip into a little bit more mechanism, and I'd also like to consider building a base and getting out of this hole in the ground. Because no matter how much I light up down there, creepers keep wandering up, and it's killing me. Literally. So I'd like to have that not happen no more, please. Uh, so with that said, let's get some beetroots, because I like to, to change the color of my ender tank. So those of you who are not uh, super familiar with, with the ender tank mod, they work kind of like ender chests, where you can put liquids in one, and it'll automatically fill up the other one. Uh, and you can color code them, and only the color codes that match are going to be the ones that get filled. So there's three little colors on top of each one. I am, because this is going to be lava, making this a red, red, red color. They don't have to be all reds. I could have just done white, white, red, or I could have done, you know, white, blue, red. You can have, like, pretty much as many, you know, combinations as there are. Um, and it's it's a very cool way of generating a very good amount of power. Or, uh, you know, transferring liquids, I guess, so that we can generate power. So with that said, we've now got two ender tanks that are ready to roll. So let's pop into the nether and be ready to see what's what. So I'm going to head to my lobby area and I've got my buckets on me. I've got a bucket on me. Good enough. Dum -dee -dee -dum -dum -dum. Now first things first, I want to check out the chunk loading because I want to make sure that everything I do here is all self-contained within one chunk. That's going to be important and you'll see why in a moment. Um, and I don't love that there's flowing lava here, so that's not my favorite. I want to make sure that we're not over flowing lava. And it seems like, it just seems like there's no getting away from it. So we're going to just cover this bad boy up. Does that look pretty safe? Yeah, I think that looks good. All right, cool. So what I want to do is place my ranged pump right here, I think. And that guy, boom, is going to start scanning, but first he needs power. So to help him out with said power, I'm going to do this. And hello, Mr. Magma Cube, that can just... I didn't even know Magma Cubes could do this thing on lava, but today I learned. Hello, friends. Yeah, I got that magma slime. Just a few little guys left. All right, so let's kickstart this thing. And what I'm going to do is snag a bucket of lava here. More more stuff there. I can right click that. He's going to take the lava. He's going to start generating power. And you can see that he doesn't have any RF in his buffer because this RF is filling up. And you'll also notice that underneath this, the lava that was here turned into stone. Cool. Uh, and that lava turned into stone. So he's now scanning all the way around. He's got, you know, 15 buckets worth of lava inside him. Next thing I want to do is pipe that lava from here into there. And this was the part I wasn't sure about, if it, if it automatically outputs. Some mods, when you have items like this that generate, uh, like fluids or whatever, it'll automatically export them to an adjacent pipe. This one doesn't seem to be. So I'm going to use my configurator here. Shift right click on the connection point between the pipe that's here and the block. And it'll go from push mode to pull mode. And that should be coolish. Are you not doing that? Can I not do it into the pipe? I may not be able to do it into the pipe. In which case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it directly into the tank. So if I put a tank on top, this guy will automatically place into a tank on top of him. So there's your ender tank. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is have a mechanical pipe here that will extract... See, he's got lava. Now, maybe he's just not rendering lava. Maybe mechanical pipes aren't rendering lava at the moment for some reason. I don't know why that would be, but it seems like that's what's happening. Meh. Oh, well. 
It's all it's all good. But anyway, we've got we've got the things happening. Cool. So that should be good. The other thing we want to do before I leave here is I want to go into FTB chunks, bring up the, the chunk claimer, and I'm going to claim this chunk for Direwolf 20's team and shift click to force load it. And what that should mean is that this area is now chunk loaded, um, which is good. So quick primer on chunk loading for those of you who may be new. I'm sure 95% of people watching this video know what chunk loading is. But long story short, Minecraft does not run all machines in all parts of the game all the time. Because uh, that would cause lag. Uh, so basically when a player is not nearby, the world isn't running. So machines don't run, nothing happens. Um, so if we leave the nether and there's no player in the nether, that pump would not run. And as a result, we wouldn't have lava back at our base. However... Um, several mods from way back in the day. Uh, I think the very first mod that ever implemented chunk loading was, believe it or not, teleport pipes back in, I want to say 1710 alpha-ish realm. So like really way back in the day. Um, <clears throat> so that's, uh, the concept is that it just pretends like there's a player in that chunk and continues to let the machines run. Uh, so what I now have is a pump in the nether, Pumping up lava, we're gonna place it here. We're gonna toggle this little thing right here, changes it so that the ender tank automatically outputs its fluid to an any adjacent machines. So see how there's no lava in here? When I right click this dude, he'll dump all his lava in and then he'll fill back up with lava very quickly because the pump in the nether is pumping up more lava and that will continue to happen. So now we've got a really awesome thing. Uh, how great is that? So you're all good, you guys are nice and full. So what I'm gonna do actually, is I'm gonna stick this guy in here. He's gonna start filling up. And you're producing 40R of a tick, but I'm gonna remove the augmentation here and drop it in here. And what that's gonna do is bump that up to now where he's producing 120R of a tick. He's obviously using more lava more quickly, but he's gonna generate power a lot more quickly too. Uh, what I'd like to do now is make more augments to speed up the RF transmission. So uh, let's see, uh, the, this increases the tank size. I don't think we care about tank capacity. Um, process energy, maximum power, uh, flavor text is a good time, but also how about just makes more RF per tick. That would also be helpful for me, my friend. Um, so to actually validate that, let's get out the Thermopedia. And we're going to go into technology, dynamos, magmatic dynamo, um, auxiliary reaction chamber. Increases the maximum generation of a dynamo by 100%, but scales the efficiency by 0.9. So that's one approach. Or multi-cycle injectors. The multi-cycle augment scales the fuel efficiency of a dynamo by 1.1. So either we can make it so that it's more RF a tick, but less efficient, or more efficient. Um, and you can mix and match these. So if you want it to just generate as much RF a tick as possible, you can put the three upgrades into this thing be all uh, the, the flux dynamo doohickeys, right? Auxiliary reaction chamber. So that's the one we want. Uh, auxiliary reaction chamber. Maximum output 100%, fuel energy 0.9%. So we get less energy per bucket of lava total, but it does it twice as fast. So I think that's kind of worth it. But we're gonna need signalum plates. So in order to make that, we're gonna need a multi-servo press, which means it's crafting time, you guessed correctly. So let's put this stuff away. Let's get ourselves uh, some ingots. So we're gonna want some silver and lead and nickel and gold and invar uh, and iron and copper. And that seems pretty good. And I'll snag, we've got a bunch of things over here that we've processed. I think we've got, uh, actually, yeah, I'll grab some more gold. I think we've got a little invar in here. So how does a multi-servo press look to us? We're gonna need a tin gear. Oh, did I forget tin? Of all the ingots to forget, twas tin that ruined me. So that's cool. Um, and that'll let me get this dude. And then in addition to that, we're gonna need a block of iron. And we're gonna need some bronze, which is three copper and a tin in the induction smelter. And uh, I'm thinking that's gonna give me eight bronze total. And then I also think we need constant tan, don't we? Yes, and that is nickel, or that's, is it copper and nickel or is it copper and silver? I always forget. It is copper and nickel. I was right the first time. That's cool. So let's actually snag that out of there. So you're doing a good job, but I don't need you generating that much power just yet. 
So there's your bronze. Let's let this thing fill back up because him being empty, he's going to fill up his buffer a little bit before, and that'll be fun times for us to deal with. So about four copper and four nickel, and hopefully you'll be okay in terms of RF, but I suspect you won't. I suspect you're going to be a little bit of a problem. And I don't want to break this because it'll waste the RF, but you know what I can do? I think I can do that. Yeah, I can. Boom. That's what's up. And then he'll run a little bit faster. And I could augment these machines too, but it makes them cost more RF per tick. And since our problem right now is we don't have enough of that, I don't feel like that's a smart move. So I haven't done that yet. So Constantan, there we go. Boom. So then multi-servo press, we'll get two of those doohickeys. We're going to want one of these, which we forgot redstone. I don't think I need more than 14, at least not at this moment. And that is a multi-servo press, which I'm going to replace the metallurgic infuser with the multi-servo press. And we will get to the metallurgic infuser when we decide to really get into mechanism. So with that good to go now, um, you need to fill up on RF, but that's okay. I can, I can help out just a smidge. Now to make the auxiliary reaction chamber, we're going to need signal and plates. So let's get um, nine, three silver. Does that sound cool? And yeah, 12 actually does seem, I think I need 16 to be honest with you. So I do need more redstone, but that's okay. And that should be good times. And as much as you've got some power needs, we'll take care of that. Once this thing's buffer fills up, I'm figuring that the way the basic energy pipes work, and I don't know if this is just a mechanic of basic energy pipes or what, but it seems like they fill whatever machine first before they move on to the next one. So no RF is getting past this guy until his internal buffer is full. And then once it is full, um, it'll, it'll run, right? So this guy can multi-servo press for these. We're gonna need some silver gears. How am I on silver? Not great, but I think we might have some more in here, or at least I hope we have some more in here because yes, we do. Awesome. So there's your signal and plates. So let's make one of these just to validate that we're correct about what this, this, this thing does. And we're also surprisingly out of sand or out of glass. Actually, no, I have glass. What am I missing? Is it, uh, is it hardened glass? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. So that is an induction smelter, obsidian and nether quartz with sand will hook me up. So, 444, you, are you almost done? Almost done. Almost done. And he's, you know, slowly but surely moving. I really need to efficiency these things up. And just to be clear, is hardened glass going to work with glass glass? Or it looks like it's sand only. So it doesn't look like I can use glass. So sand... You and you, and that'll make me hardened glass. Not too bad. Not too bad. Get two hardened glass, actually, so that's actually not bad. All right, so now you, who's currently making 120 R of a tick, boom, is now making 240, but lower efficiency. See, 90% efficiency. So we're using more lava at the cost of producing RF faster, which I'm all for that. Now, um, in terms of refined pipes, uh, the basic energy pipe does a thousand RF a tick. So if we get this thing beyond a thousand RF a tick, which I think we might be able to do, because the next tier should be, if I'm not mistaken, um, so that would be two more of you. So I need an iron nugget. I need two more of you. This should be 480. 360. Okay, so one more to be 480. Okay, that's not bad. So let's get one more. Uh, so multi-servo press, hook me up with that. Also, the multi-servo press makes uh, gears a little bit cheaper, if you wish. Um, most gear recipes are now three ingots, I think, rather than four. Um, but you need a gear working die for that to work. And that requires a diamond gear and four invar plates. And that just goes into, I think, here. Um, and that's what it will change it up. So... You know, if we get to the point where that feels like it's going to be worth doing, we probably will. Probably when we get to automation, we'll do something like that. So now with all four auxiliary reaction chambers in here, 73% efficiency. So basically using a lot more uh, lava to produce the RF that we're producing, but not too bad. But also, you know, a lot faster, 480 RF a tick. And we can get it even faster if we wanted to make some enderium ingots. 
and some Lumium gears. That's kind of doable at this stage, I think, for us. I think it would require, it's two Ender Pearls to two Enderium Ingham. So we need four Ender Pearls for that to happen, and we only have one. So I don't think it's worth it, but we could at some point in the future. Nice, look at his output. That is awesome. So 480 off a tick, um, and then theoretically, once he fills up, he should... So he's actually using lava, even though his internal buffer is full, isn't he? Yeah, he is. So that's one downside. So this, this thing is a little bit wasteful. And I don't know if there's an augment that prevents that from happening. Um, if we wanted to, we could like turn it off with a redstone signal and then it stops running. So maybe we could like measure the amount of R RF in this thing. Hmm. He's actually, he, he's losing RF a little bit. Oh, so that makes it actually a little bit trickier. I think that I read about that in the book. The Thermopedia had something about that. Is that specific to magmatic dynamos? Or is that all dynamos? That might be all dynamos. Um, dynamos have an internal buffer, which can be upgraded using integral components, but not RF coil up augments. Dynamos will automatically throttle their RF output and fuel usage based on how full this buffer is. When empty, dynamos will work at their maximum RF output. When full, dynamos will work at 10% output using fuel even though the RF generated is wasted. The buffer will only automatically output when the dynamo is generating and will gradually decay when idle. See? So that's what's happening. Though I don't think I noticed that with coal. Am I crazy or did that not happen with coal? I feel like coal didn't have that, but maybe I'm wrong. But anyway, um... Yeah, turning this thing off feels like a good idea. And also you can see it's power decaying. See on the whale tool tip there? Totally, totally decaying. So that's something to keep in mind. So turning him off is probably a smart move. Um, I like that idea. So let me fill up my capacitor now and I'm gonna turn you on. And then all his energy will go into filling up my buddy the flux capacitor. And that's feeling pretty good. All right, not too shabby. All right, we'll be back in a moment when we're ready to move on to the next stage. But for now, we have a ton of RF power, and it should last for a good bit. Uh, hello. I heard noises outside, and I popped out, and oh, look. Hello, friends. Yes, I will get the omen. Well, that was almost scary. Also, I'm pretty low on uh, armor and such, so... I mean, I'm not sure that I want to go do a raid at this moment, is the thing. Uh, what I was gonna do was build a little bit of a house and get out of this hole in the wall that I call a home. Um, I haven't decided exactly how I want to lay out my base this season. Do I want to do... I, I definitely want to do my traditional starting 9x9, nine nine, which is two 9x9s nine with a 21x9 on the side. Um, but... Beyond that, I'm not sure what my plan is. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm gonna, if that'll be a temporary home that I'll eventually move into somewhere nicer. You know me, I'm not much of a builder. So like, don't come into this series expecting Dyer to build fancy houses. But if you guys wanna do some building gadgets stuff to, to send me some fancy houses, that I would not object to. So, you know, that might be cool. But let's get into building gadgets, speaking of, so that I can show you guys the mod, because you know, Dyer loves that mod. And also, um, Stuff and things, by the way, of... of ooh, look, I'm in a spanner. Yeah. Uh, I think it'll be useful to have. Let's just put it that way. Get into things. You can go over here because you're a mob drop. And I mean, technically, so is the other spanner. Technically. I don't know if it's useful at all. But let's get into gadgets. So you can see I've got that set up on the top left. So a building gadget, I think, is one of the first things that I'm going to make. Uh, and that should be cool. And that'll help me build a little, a little house. So nifty cool how are you doing by the way power <gasps> we filled up our flux capacitor yay and i'll let this guy fill up rather than draining the rf out of the flux capacitor do i also want to get my destruction gadget up and running i could i could it's a possibility uh and there's also the exchanging gadget i probably wouldn't mind one of them and that'll fill up from the flux capacitor do i want a destruction gadget technically i don't have the ender pearls for it but i do have a nebulous heart which dropped from an Enderman. Uh, I think in the nether I got that. And then I can get a destruction gadget, and that sounds like a good time. So those are all three of my gadgets. 
So with all that done, I'm gonna put away my stuffs here. Um, the only other gadget is the copy paste gadget, which I'm not sure if I need right now, but I kind of should. Kind of should. Maybe, maybe we will, because it won't hurt. Just a few, just a few emeralds, and I'll get more emeralds at some point. So having a copy paste gadget might not be a bad idea. Cool. I think that's fair. And then you go back to filling up your flux capacitor for the time being. And you're just burning all the lavas. I gotta be careful with that, because he will absolutely waste lava uh, if I'm not careful. You know, if I wanted to, I could replace one of these guys with a more efficient fuel, but just prolongs the issue, right? Uh, so I don't think that's a worthwhile investment. So you're enough. I'm gonna call that enough. So here, all the dire gadgets totally available, which is cool. So let's put you over here, Thermopedia. I don't know if the building gadget will accept things, and I don't think Chisel, Chisel's not out for, um, surprisingly, Chisel is not out for 116. Chisel and Bits is Chisel, not as much. So there won't be any chiseling of fancy blocks, that's for sure. Um, so we'll probably just be using straight up cobble to start with. So let's get into the gadgets that you have available to you. Um, so first things first, let's talk about the destruction gadget. All this does is void blocks from an area. So you shift right click to set the area you wanna go in. So I'm gonna do depth of one and we'll do eight by eight. At most, it can do a 16 by 16 area. So see how here it's too, it's too big, right? So 16 by 16 is kind of your best bet. So if I confirm that, that will help me to void some stuff. So what I'm going to do is void all that. See how that works? Boom. And there should be an undo. So if you hit U, it'll revert the last voiding you did. You can't undo beyond the last one, though. So, you know, keep that in mind. Be careful. Sweet. And that helps... That helps just clear out a, a bit of area. And while it's not that useful for things like tall grass, it is that useful if you want to do this. So check this guy out. So if I wanted to do this, for example, I'm just gonna bring on the down direction, I'll only do one. And on the up, we'll do higher. We'll just do like 10 on the up. And then I'm also going to, let's change our controls. So I don't like, the F key being on swipe item hand. What I want is gadgets. I like anchor to be G and settings menu to be F. So what else is F at the moment? Just settings menu? Seems pretty good. So now I will turn off, let's see, show overlay. Oh right, because I only have it on depth of one. So I'm gonna bump depth up here. Sweet. I'll go as deep as 15. Haha! <laughs> How cool is that, huh? Not too shabby. So that'll help flatten out your terrain just a little bit. So just make sure you're paying attention to, you know, what you're doing, and you should be fine. Sweet. All right. Now, did I put dirt in this thing? I did. Good. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to... I always set the depth back down to zero, and that will basically do nothing. Uh, it's a nice, safe way of making sure you're not accidentally voiding stuff that you didn't intend to void. Um, remember, you can always undo once. So if you made a mistake, that's cool. But don't make two mistakes, because then you're in trouble. So the destruction gadget will clear an area out. Uh, the exchanging gadget will swap one block with another. So let's see here. I can increase the range. Um, I can adjust if it's fuzzy or not. So fuzzy mode off means that it'll only swap the blocks I'm looking at. So I'm looking at smooth stone, it'll only swap smooth stone. Cool. Um, and that's it, right? This is old stone from extra cave, so that's why it's not matching. This is stone, this is old stone. They look almost identical, don't they? Though I guess they have a slightly different, they look a, a little bit different, but it's hard to notice unless you happen to notice. <laughs> um, so that's, so shift right click to set what type of block you wanna to switch to. I am going to set fuzzy mode off, which means it'll, it'll switch everything. Um, or maybe I don't, maybe I'll keep fuzzy mode off and that should be cool. And you can also use the R hotkey to change 
you know, what I might actually, yeah, let me do this. Let me do fuzzy mode on. And then I can do that. And it'll exchange those blocks. So the stone went into the pocket storage. Yay for that. The iron came into my inventory. Uh, let's see, the old stone here probably ain't going to work. Let's... Did old stone go into my... Maybe old stone drops cobblestone. And if that's the case, then it makes sense. Sweet. How cool is that? Now we're getting a red overlay on some spots because I'm running out of dirt. So it's basically telling me that those blocks will not exchange. Or at least it should have been saying that. Oh, you know why? Because I'm getting dirt from the grass that I'm exchanging. <laughs> that's that's a thing. So if we came over here and did this, for example, I was like, did I just find a bug in my own mod? No. When we break the grass, we're getting dirt, and then it's using the dirt to do the exchanging. So it's actually working. Um, so this should only exchange those guys. Um, and as a note, there is no undoing of exchange because you can just swap it back. So that's, you know, a thing. So that's a nice little flattened area for me to work in. I think I'm going to sleep through this night because I don't want to deal with monsters tonight. So we'll do that. Um, and then, so that's your exchanging gadget. And they all use RF, but I've got the flux capacitor, so it's recharging them as it uses them. So as a, as a note there, keep that in mind. So let's put this stuff away. I guess you could process that iron for me. It would be nice. Cool. And then I don't think I need the sand or the sandstone. I wouldn't mind a little bit more dirt. I guess I've got a little bit would be cool. So should we exchange and gadget our way into some dirt? That might not be a bad idea. Yeah, we are very much out of dirt at this point. So short of, you know, doing a bunch of mining, I think we'll just leave it as is. But that looks good. Maybe we'll we'll make this all some some green kind of terrain. But the goal of building gadgets was mostly the destruction gadget's great for terraforming an area. Uh, the exchanging gadget is good for swapping blocks. And then the building gadget itself is nice for building structures. Um, and again, this is, a, this is a mod that I made, which I'm pretty proud of. Uh, what I'm not proud of is how messy the code base has gotten. Uh, it's, it's a little bit messy these days, but I mean, at some point I'll probably look into cleaning it up. I might even, I might even, just release a completely built from scratch version of the mod because frankly it could use it frankly it could use it so since i'm not powering anything right now by the way let's turn this off oops redstone signal high which means stop wasting lava please and thank you at some point i probably won't worry about that as much or i'll automate it but we'll see so now what i want to do is let's get cobblestone as my building material and we'll look into fancying this up at some point so the building gadget has lots of different modes. The exchanging gadget, we saw surface mode, which kind of just does the whole area, but you could, if you wanted to, do a horizontal or vertical column or a grid, which is nice for placing torches, by the way. Um, but what I'm gonna do with the building gadget is show you the different modes that are available. So build to me, um, if you're looking at a block, it'll build from the block you're looking at to your player's current position. So if I right click this, it'll do that. And there's also undo on this guy. Uh, your building gadget stores, I think, 10 levels of undo, unless that's been changed at some point. Um, you've got surface mode, which will build on top of a of a block's surface. So you can kind of see, because I'm looking at, at, at dirt, it's only going to build on top of dirt. That's why it's not, you know, going beyond there. If I looked at grass, it would only build on top of grass. And this guy also has a fuzzy mode that you can turn on and off. So that's cool, right? Um, it doesn't look like he's going to pull out of the pocket storage, but that's okay. Uh, cause what I'm going to do is just grab some cobble out of the pocket storage myself. So there's surface mode, there's grid mode, which you can make like a grid pattern. Great for checkerboards and torches. There's stairs mode. There is horizontal wall. So that will build towards the player, whatever wall they're looking at. It's nice for making roofs. Uh, there is vertical wall, which will build up. If you're looking at the top of a block and if you're looking at the bottom of a block it'll build down from it um so like that so see how it's building down from the block and if you're looking at the side of a block it'll build around it cool so depending on what block face you're looking at different things happen uh with that uh same for horizontal column it kind of builds away from you so that's pretty spiffy So it'll build away from the block face you're looking at. 
Though technically it shouldn't be building here, so that's kind of a bug, but whatever. Minor bug. And vertical column, like vertical wall, top side of the block, bottom side of the block, and if you look at the side of a block, it'll build around it. And it'll use the, the range setting to decide you know, how tall to be. So if I shrink the range down to, to one, two, three, right? Uh, and then the same for building down. And for building around it, so if I make it five, for example, it'll be, you know, up to and down to equals five. So that's that guy. So let's use this to build a fancy nine by nine. So I think I'm gonna go with uh, seven here. Now options, controls, key G. I'm gonna disable Curio's inventory opening and chest mode switch from mechanism. Uh, G is an anchor. So you can anchor the render and then it, it sticks there and you can look around and see what it would look like if you placed the block there and then right click, it'll place those blocks and remove the anchor and you can still undo. Hello, rat dude, how are you? Plague doctor, ah. so for 10 raw rats, you'll give me an emerald, huh? Otherwise, uh, remove dye from rats or sheep, huh? Ah. That's neat. Plague stew. Yeah, plague is the worst. I do not want that. Ah. Uh, yeah, I don't need anything, rats doctor. Thank you, I do appreciate you coming to visit, but nope, don't really need much. I'm building a house. Uh, so where do I wanna place this house? How about like right-ish here? So does seven blocks tall look good? Or should I go six? Yeah, six should be fine. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, now if I wanted to, I could do that or I could just build to me and that should be fine. Yeah, that looks good. How's that, pretty cool? And that is a quickie nine by nine. And what I'll do is build to me here, 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 here. And then I do want some more glass so I can have my traditional nine by nine roof. Are you out of power? How are you out of power? I don't even know, but I'm gonna turn you back on, ignored. You should be getting power. You probably, you you know what? I was probably processing some ores. So anyway, I'm gonna need about 16 glass. I should really, I should really augment the speed of my redstone furnace and whatnot, but we'll see. So there's the 16 glass that I'm gonna need. So I'm gonna, you have to place at least one of these, right? Uh, to get, so you can shift right click to specify what, what block you're placing. And there you go, a traditional die or nine by nine, seven by seven internal. Um, the, the beauty of the nine by nine, if we look at F7 here, we will see that it's all dark inside, right? But if I click, 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 this is where the nine by nine came from. This is the origin of the nine by nine. Torches on the wall, not on the floor, because it always bugs me when there's torches on the floor. Biggest pet peeve, right? So torches on the wall, this is where the first nine by nine came from. If you made any bigger building, you cannot do this unless you lower the torches or put them on the floor. Not ideal. So I kind of like this design, right? That's just my my personal design. It's what I like. Cool. So I'm gonna move my bed in there. I'm gonna move my crafting table in there. Uh, oh, maybe not my crafting table yet. Uh, actually, probably not even my bed yet because I'm gonna want to copy paste this thing. And that's next on the docket. So uh, what I'd like to do is build another one of these. So what I'm going to do is get some glass. I only need one more, and that'll be enough for my next house. And we're going to use the copy-paste gadget to do that. This is me basically testing my own mod because I haven't really played with it all that much. So I'm going to build, in this direction, another one of these. So uh, it'll be here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, we definitely need to clear some stuff here. So let's do you. We're going to... Clear it that many back, and that should give us plenty of room. It was always my biggest pet peeve um, to spend like 10 minutes clearing terrain, right? So the benefit of the destruction gadget is it clears the terrain. You don't get the blocks though, so like that's the counterbalance to it. So let's let's copy using the copy and paste gadget this structure. Um, so what I'm going to do is we're going to put it on copy mode. I'm going to click one corner. 
and that's the first position, and then shift click the other corner, and that will highlight the area. No dire wire, please. Good call. And you can see it kind of highlights the area that you're looking at. You can see the, the bordering there. It's a very thin line, but you can see the area that you've got highlighted. And then I'm gonna put it on paste mode, and you can see it shows uh, an overlay of where it's gonna paste. Now I'm gonna anchor that dude, and we'll see that it uh, it has everything, right? It has the glass, it has the torches, it has the hole in the wall, but I don't like that, so I'm gonna rotate it. Um, and I think that seems pretty good, actually. So if I anchor you here, actually, you're, you're just a little bit. So let's do that, confirm. So you can adjust like this, and you can also adjust the Y level if you wanted to, make minor adjustments like that. And now we've got a pretty good structure here. So if I right click this, it builds all the things. Now sometimes the torches don't lay down perfectly because if the torches get placed before the cobblestone finishes placing, that happens. Not the end of the world, um, but you know, it's a thing. It's a thing that happens. Pretty cool though, huh? Yeah, that's, that's, that's building gadgets. Neat. And I stand corrected, by the way. Uh, it looks like the, the copy-paste gadget is definitely pulling from pocket storage. Check this out. I noticed it didn't use any cobblestone, so I was testing this. But look, 3.56 cobblestone. If I place this in the world, it still pastes. And now it's 3.34. So it definitely used cobblestone out of my pocket storage, which is awesome. So that's really cool. I very much appreciate that. Now, it might just be a rendering issue. So like if I put all my cobblestone into here and then I tell you to build to me some cobblestone, it's going to say it's red, but if I click it, it's going to actually work. So that's just a that's just a rendering issue. That's just my 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 thing not knowing that there's cobblestone available inside the pocket storage for the client. So it's not drawing it properly. But it does use it out of the pocket storage. So that's awesome. So one minor bug to address there. I can probably, I can probably figure that out. Uh, but that's hey, that's a nine by nine, right? Hello, sir. Goodbye, rat. Are you invisible in my house? Because I feel like, I feel like entering another person's house and then going invisible is kind of rude, right? I feel like that's, that's not what I would call friendly, polite behavior. Going invisible inside another person's house. Okay. Okay, so no, no, Mr. Plague Doctor, I, I disagree. So that's building gadgets, uh, should make it a little bit easier for you guys to build stuff out. Um, so that, that copy and paste structure that I showed you there, can I make a template manager? Um, that's gonna cost emeralds. I kind of want to show it to you, but I also don't want to use my emeralds, but you can use a template manager to save the structure that you copy pasted onto a piece of paper, this thing, a template, and then you can retrieve it at some point in the future. So if you decide later on, like, yeah, I want to make another 9x9, nine nine, uh, you can save and copy and paste uh, your copy-paste stuff. Cool? All right. So that's Dyer's traditional 9x9 nine nine home. That's generally what I make uh, as a traditional house. Um, so usually I have this area as a storage location to store. I'm going to put all my chests in there. This is my main structure. Um, usually I leave the floor as, as, as grass. Um, and then I also, for, for machines, I have a structure over here. So I'm going to build that real quick now. So we're going to do, uh, let's see, what I might do. Yeah, let's do this. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Does that seem about right? Right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Cool. And then I'm going to clear a depth of one, confirm. Eh, I don't actually like that. Undo that. Let's do here. Does that look good? That kind of lines up with that, right? Like that. I like that. And I mean, not for nothing, with a 7x7 seven seven miner, it's not that hard to clear things. Um, and then let's exchange and gadget some dirt. I'm just going to do 3x3. Three three. And that looks cool. Nice. 
nice. Hello, Bunny. Bunny's like, do what? All right, and then building gadget your way over to here. Does that look cool? Yeah. Here. And then here. And then here. And then here. And I mean, I could do this with whatever mode I wanted to, frankly, but it's all good. I gotta go fix that manually. Because that was definitely a little bit of a dire derp. Okay. How's that look for a basic structure? Not too shabby. Nice. My whole goal with building gadgets was to make it easier to build large structures all in one go. Because for me, I'm a little bit lazy. Nice. Um, and also, I do my, 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 my ceiling lights on this structure a little bit differently. And boom, we have a mob farm. Awesome. Yeah, what did I do? Oh, that's, uh, that's Psy. I was like, what button did I push? Cool. All right, so generally speaking... Is that what I want? How do I do... I forget how I do my skylights in this one. Um, I think it's three. And then one gap. Yes, I think that's how I do it. I mean, obviously you can do the skylights however you want, but I just have like, I like, I like how that has like the one by one border then. That looks pretty good, right? It's a good skylight structure. Also, it's just high enough that I can reach the ceiling without being too concerned. All right, that is a functional dire base right there. Let me tell you. Looks pretty good too, right? Not too shabby. How's my uh, glass coming along? What I should do is start thinking about more sand. Because glass is good. Right? This is how you sand, folks. I like that. Dude, that drill is something else. Let me tell you, I am a fan of the drill. I really, really am. It's a little shenanigans, and I love it. I love how much shenanigans there are in that drill. All right, so you redstone furnace up some sand, and I think I think sand would also fit well in the, in the thing. Now, dirt's gonna stay in there, so that can be good. Cool. All right, how are we for glass? Mm, maybe enough. But that's a dire home. Uh, I'm going to probably spend some time between episodes moving. Uh, I already showed you guys. Yeah, so we didn't have quite enough glass. I already showed you guys the um, cardboard box. So I'm going to use those to move my, 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 my chests, right? So I'm going to, I'll show you guys what I'm going to do right now while I'm waiting for this glass to cook. Um, I'm going to set up uh, my chests. Probably back here usually is where I put them along this wall. I usually also do this so I can get into my area either way. Hey. The one thing I'd love to do is have this guy keep a stack in stock kind of deal. So like as I use items, have this guy export into my inventory. That would be kind of cool. I might request that as a feature. Um, but what I'd like to see is... Uh, do I want, or do I want things? There's a couple things I could do. I could either have my machine starting over in this area so that I can pop in here, get my stuff out of my chest, pop in here, do some machine work in this area here. Uh, and then over here is going to be my bed and crafting table type, you know, basic little living quarters type thing that I usually do. Um, you know, 
And I'm thinking what I'm going to do, because I really like when I do it this way, I'm thinking what I'm going to do in this series is probably each major um, mod will have its own working area, right? So like extreme reactors will have a reactor building. Um, I'll probably have a different reactor building for uh, mechanisms reactors. I'll probably have an environmental tech building. I'll have like an astral area, like with like a nice astral type looking thing, right? So that's kind of my plan. I think we'll see how that works out. I like doing that. I like I like the concept of having like different areas, or I could try and have like one big theme, right? That would be another idea, like a themed kind of like locations like there'd be different buildings for different mods but they kind of all fit a theme i don't know i'm not that creative about that kind of stuff so that's where i fall flat i'm not good at doing those kinds of things so we'll see but for now i think it's a wrapping up point so daryl 20 signing off hope you guys enjoyed the episode uh we've got a house to live in now which is a little bit nicer than a hole in the wall uh i'll probably grab some dirt between episodes and, and replace the dirt that's uh on, or the sand that's on the ground here technically i'm kind of living in a desert biome here and a plains biome here not the best idea but meh it's fine all right guys double 20 sign off like i said hope you enjoyed the episode take it easy